to, um, to this forum. Um, we're going to start this morning with an opening prayer by Aaron Wilder, our last president. And then um, we've got a couple of announcements, and then we will uh, dive into our forum. So, Aaron. I was going to do my announcement first. <laughs> um, welcome. This is my board building, so I am kind of the host for the building. I have the keys if anybody needs anything. Um, I just need to ask a special favor. Um, we went through the proper channels to get approved for this activity through our scheduling committee, but there's a little bit of sensitivity for our stake because our state president is the executive assistant to the profit. So if you're going to post on social media, please don't imply that our state sponsored this or <laughs> please don't imply that, you know, it can leak up, you know, that the profit may know about it. And he doesn't. <laughs> so I just want to just kind of clear the air on that. If you're going to post on social media, great. You know, sh show pictures, talk about what we're doing, boost LDSPMA all you want, but like, don't refer to this location or, or this stake if that's all right. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Our kind Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this meeting of the minds. We're so thankful for those who have sacrificed their time and energy and resources to be here today. We see this as the most important uh, step for our organization to move forward in a way that is loving and inclusive and can span the world as far as we can reach. We're thankful for the many talents that we represent and the many opportunities that we hope to provide. We're thankful for the blessings that have helped us exist to this point for these eight and a half years. We're thankful for the many hands that have gone into every effort we've ever done and and many of those who are here who have helped. And for this day, we ask for thy grace, for thy the leading guidance to help us to be able to feel and to listen with our hearts as we speak to one another, that we might be able to truly have eyes to see and ears to hear, and that we might be able to feel the direction that thou would have us go as an organization to serve and bless the members of the church and to hasten work around the world. We ask for health and protection for all of us and our loved ones, that this space and all of our interests will be protected as we do this work today. And we love and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. One additional announcement. Um, Robert Starling, um, one of our longtime members, is planning to do some filming today and take some pictures. If you would not like to be on film, um, please let me know. Um, after I sit down, you can come sneak over and talk to me. Um, but if, if there's, yeah, if there's any reason if you don't want to be on film, then let me know. We're not posting um, the whole meeting on social media or anything like that, um, but it's possible that we could use short clips um, of our, our activities or photographs of our activities um, somehow. Um, okay, so um, I want to begin by sincerely thanking each of you today for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here, and many of you have come from afar. Thank you so very much. We really, really appreciate that. We value your insights as professionals and as creators, um, because that's what LDS PMA is all about, um, is serving professionals and creators in the fields of um, publishing media and the arts. Eight years ago, Latter-day Saint Publishing Professionals Association was founded to support Latter-day Saints in the publishing industry. Um, we've grown quite a bit since then, and we've expanded from publishing to these other areas that I've mentioned. Um, we're really proud of our growth and all that we've accomplished in the last eight years. Um, now, but now eight years later, we 
we are wanting to um, to stand back and check out what we have done and what we could do. So we have um, decided to to gather all of you here today for this visioning forum. We we want to know who our partners are, who our members are, what their needs are, and how we can best serve um, all of these stakeholders in the future. Um, the vision that we discuss today and conclude with today is going to help us to, uh, to make decisions about volunteers, about staffing, about um, resource procurement and allocation, um, and about our programs. So we really, really appreciate your being here today, and we really appreciate your input. Um, to help us with this visioning forum, we would like Kimball Fisher right here, uh, who helped us understand our original goals and our establishment in 2015. Um, Kimball has more than 25 years of experience facilitating meetings just like this. Um, and he's done it not with just nonprofits like us, but with Fortune 100 companies and with government agencies. Um, so we trust Kimball. Um, since he was here at our founding, we thought it fitting that he join us again. So I'll turn the rest of the time to Kimball. Thanks for coming. Uh, let's clap. It's a close clap. Uh, picture the vision continued 
Uh, after lunch, we'll have a report out from each table. We're doing an exercise called the walkabout. This is from my Australian friends. Uh, where you will go around and you will look in, at detail at each of these visions. And then you will identify the parts of everyone's vision that you really like. Uh, they'll be helpful to us later on. Uh, we'll continue after the 2.30 break to identify vision emphasis areas based on those pictures. So what are the things we really need to focus on as a community in your opinion? Uh, we're going to do something that's called open space planning, uh, which will get these uh, areas identified uh, and will get ways for you to follow up and then complete a planning process in the specific area that you're interested in. Is there any questions? Are there any disagreements? <laughs> All right, let's go. Introductions, here's how it works. We, we want to have you, each person will stand uh, at the table, say your name, uh, say how you're connected to LDS PMA. Uh, and then, this is the different part. I'd like you to identify someone that you consider to be a hero in your life. We're gonna do this so we can create some common ground. Um, and why is that person a hero? I am Kim Clement, and I um, help organize Fast Pitch this year. I'm doing virtual Fast Pitch, which is new and exciting. And one of my heroes is an author that I'm working with. And, and, um, and part of that is a concern on the table that the branding, um, we have a branding problem. The LDS it itself uh, defines us in a way that seems to um, have people decide that they shouldn't be part of us. Um, we don't think we've done a great job in, in, in creating partnerships with organizations to help uh, strengthen and broaden our, our group. Uh, we think we do a better job in focus outreach to that audience. Um, while we think we have a lot of things going on with diverse mediums, we don't think we're doing enough, a good enough job in cross-industry networking. So for example, author publishers who need to have graphic designers, graphic designers are looking for work, how well are we putting them together? Um, there is some discussion in our table about the dilution. So when Steve and I had this idea, it was about publishers, and then of course we have filmmakers, and we have podcasters, and we have uh, fine artists, we have oh, so many different art forms, and in that is there, how do we keep that diversity while not diluting uh, who we are? And then while we are in the LDS PMA and we think that the light of Christ is the foundation of it, there is some concern that, that somehow we have push the Savior Jesus Christ to the margins um, rather than making sure that the Savior Jesus Christ is the center of all that we do. And that is our, in three minutes, I think I know you did it. Let's clap. Yeah. Everybody on the top of your chart, write your group number, by the way, because we're going to post these and you can't go look at these. Let's go to uh, group number three, Prouds and Sorries. Our crowds were extremely proud. Uh, we're extremely proud of our keynote speakers. We think they're just amazing that we draw to the conference, more so than other conferences. We're extremely proud of the conference itself, and we think we have the best quality professionals involved in this conference when compared to others. We're really um, pleased with the gospel connection as, as part of the whole organization and the emphasis on faith and spirituality. My, my table can jump in and miss anything. Uh, we really love our pitch sessions and the fact that we scrub candidates, which is a high value add of the pitch sessions. And uh, we're really pleased at the mentor mentorship that happens, whether formally or informally in the organization. Okay, so on the sorry side, <clears throat> um, we feel that we, we still have unknown and underdeveloped visual arts and underrepresented groups in the organization. I think that's been mentioned. Um, we think there's still some geographic limitations, predominantly Intermountain West, and uh, we could do more in terms of our online reach um, and our public face and outreach. Um, there, was a, there was some uh, discussion about the energy level and the identity of our group, that, um, the cohesion, the sense of identity that we have compared to other organizations and conferences. Um, there was a feeling that our name could be exclusive, um, and there was a lot of discussion around our mission, which we felt needed clarity and clarity of our audience. Um, there was a comment about the name of the Praiseworthy Awards 
uh, is kind of redundant. And so there were some comments about that. Uh, we, we, were, um, we would like to see expanded pitch sessions to other tracks. something, you know, more continuity throughout the year. Um, there is no real writing competition beyond the spark of words. Um, and uh, there was a, a thought about expecting too much out of our volunteers. Um, the question about how does media get more involved in the mission of the organization and then uh, limited resources. Did I miss anything? All right. Thank you. Wow. So our crowd's were um, super proud of the way we look up to leaders and that we develop leaders in the program, um, the way that LESPMA celebrates success of those that are participating, the quality of the conference, um, the diverse industries that are represented in LESPMA, that things are centered on Christ, um, and we focus a little bit of that too on the light of Christ because it doesn't matter whether someone is a Christian or another they have Muslim friends, but they you know they're just acting on that light of Christ inside of them and doing great big things in the world. And it feels like we're doing a good job with that, leaning that way. Proud of the level of creativity, proud of the inclusive community. And the way we talked about that was it doesn't matter if you're just a brand new college kid or someone who's getting the praiseworthy award. When you come into the conference, you're participating, everyone feels the same. And that that's huge. Um, the servant leadership that is brought by people in this room and a lot of other people. The inspired networking. And this was actually talking about the depth of networking, like truly getting connected with the right person at the right time who can help you with something instead of general networking. Um, the openness to talk about all things, anything's on the table, and that can be done without shame. Right? We can say those things and we can be like, oh. I should think about that. And so people can feel safe talking about and bringing these things up. And then people were super impressed with the executive leadership and even in particular how they could pull this off in such a short time and get everybody sitting in this room. So high quality there. The saris were had to do with the name and the website image. And the idea was that it wasn't really reflective of the experience you have when you actually show up wasn't necessarily a bad thing, it just was not, it didn't, doesn't jive, it's not fitting. Um, and some of the comments were, kind of gives off maybe a close-mindedness, traditional, wasp kind of attitude, and so we broke that down even more, and then we got really clear on like, what are the traditions, like the church traditions, and then it brought in the Pioneer Corridor. Because we talked about how, the um, gospel is, and cultures around gospel are completely different. You can go to Hawaii, and it's completely different, right? And so it just so happens that the church, because the church headquarters are here, we kind of align things with that pioneer corridor, which is why Europe, you know, that came in. So the Swedish, I brought that up, the Swedish, because I've been researching, I've been fascinated by it since I've been here. You have the English and the Swedish and those cultures, if you study those countries and those cultures, they're very passive by nature. But we, we tend to keep attaching that to the gospel instead of breaking that apart. So that are all the kinds of things that were coming up that need to be addressed. So it's like bigger than that. Um, it sounds like it's owned by the church. Plus or minus. Um, on the media track, just they were talking, we were talking more like percentages. Like who's the market? Do we have 5% of people coming into the conference as media? Like, who are we really attracting? And that there was a real lack of attracting in the media market. Um, up there on the Betty, um, I wrote the word Betty to kind of sum it up. I love the way Dallas Jenkins talked about that um, when he was a keynote at one of the conferences and how he, they stayed in a hotel room and they were um, trying to figure out who they were doing the chosen for. They call it the Betty. So who is Elias Pammy's Betty? I don't think we even really know. We have more of a car of people or something, I don't know. Um, most think that Elias Pammy is a publisher. And there's no, there's no space 
truly really focused for what the millennials and Gen Zs are doing and the world that they're creating in is still more like the 40 and above is the vibe when it comes in and that's not the reality and they're out there fighting and they're the future of this kind of creativity and they're in an economy and other things that is killing them and they're fighting to stay in that space and it really if we want a future we should bust that open and like step into that even though it's uncomfortable let's clap the awards program growth um, someone mentioned it was, you know, the first, it was just a luncheon or something, and it grew to what it was in the, in the Provo Library last year, full room, just a uh, great, great program. Spark Awards as well, the growth there, very welcoming. Um, the group is very welcoming, open arms, good things happening there. There's a lot of opportunity for involvement. No one has turned away. Actually, there has to be involved. Great networking, wonderful education, the podcast growth, this was mentioned earlier, but new ways to communicate and stay in touch with people. Uh, uh, aligning faith with professions and professionals is, is a big thing. The volunteer tables, that was a plus. The workshops and lunches, the online piece was, was discussed as, as being good. Some of the sorries, the online following, is there more we could do online to grow this, right? Um, as was mentioned earlier, if you can't be there in person, are, are there ways to do things in addition to the workshops and luncheons and create that, that online following that we're all after? We talked a lot about the acronym, maybe call to create or aligning with the podcast name might be better. Um, it was mentioned maybe it was too BYU focused or uh, institutional focused, is that right? Okay. Um, maybe additional quarterly networking in person possibilities. Um, more chance to get together in person. Um, and we really focus on the Gen Zennial piece as well. Is there a way to draw the younger generations in, right? We're going to age out, guys. Sorry, but we're going to age out. How do, we, how do we get real and genuine and transparent with the younger generation, the things that they're facing, right? Oftentimes, we are much too traditional in the way we look at things. How do we attack the LGBTQ issues? How do we attack the BIPOC issues? in a way that's meaningful and still faith-based. Um, uh, it was mentioned a quarterly newsletter, but somebody also mentioned we have a monthly newsletter, so maybe there is enough happening there, not sure. But it was also mentioned each of us as members trying to figure out is there a common hashtag? Are we taking pictures here today? Are we posting? Are we letting people know what we're doing? Wherever we're doing things, is there a way to raise the level of visibility and awareness of what the organization is, what the mission is, what we stand for, and that way we'll attract more people to us that way. Fabulous. Investing in that would be a huge plus to further the offerings. Um, retention also, um, I th we feel like we do a pretty good job retaining actually come and engage and have the experience in the conference, but um, things like awards or speakers or things like that, we feel like in general haven't been retained as well as they could have been. Um, like for example, Daryl Eves um, had tons of audiovisual problems while he was giving his presentation. So if I were him, I wouldn't want to come back either, you know, um, which is really sad. Um, or people, somebody mentioned they won the award and that's how they found out about the organization. Uh, similarly, the group I held won an award and it's like we didn't even know we'd been entered, we don't even know who this is, so like, great, thank you for the free lunch. And everyone else, I was already involved, but everyone else wanted that. Um, so we missed that opportunity to retain. Um, Steve mentioned that it's very US centric still, even though it's getting outside of Utah and this corridor. Um, he envisions it to be international, which is really good. Um, uh, also, um, this is kind of a problem and also that we need to improve with engaging more throughout the year. Um, so there are amazing programs and offerings throughout the year, but um, many of the people that I have talked to, like at the conference or throughout the year, have never heard that there's other things, or they see the post like the day of, they're having this live um, session online, and so, sorry I missed it. Um, 
so, and then um, the two others were social media and online presence, um, which goes kind of, the brand, brand foundation needs to be there first, but then um, picking like, you know, like with the Betty Chosen, for example, focused only on Facebook for the first several years, even though Instagram was the new hip thing to be on. And that's because their Betty was on Facebook, and now they've since shifted to a new audience. But same thing, so we were saying folk pick one or two social media channels to really focus in and craft the content to that and make sure you're relevant on that. LinkedIn might be a great one for a community like this. It's kind of the professional development social media. Um, and also donations. Uh, Steve mentioned how the, the conference... Um, it is. Decided to turn it into a bento box. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a choose your own bento box. Um, one of the things people, you know, everyone's created to sort of light bulbs represent that, but a larger light bulb represent the light of Christ. That everyone comes with, but also that everyone feels like they're That's who the far our audience is, temple for terms of the church, the world. A lot of people come to get direction. And they leave maybe in a different direction sometimes. So we have a sign of directions. A big thing is opening doors. So there's a little compartment for a door. Some people come to speak. Some people gain a voice. But we also, one big point that came out was our people come to the SPM to, to listen and to hear. So there's a here. Wagon wheel with spokes helping people connect. That's a big piece. Sometimes it's you learn how to make money in your craft. So we got dollar signs. A weird looking brain for learning. And then a bridge. What comes up a lot of times is for some people to bridge in from this as a casual hobby or an interest into a profession. Or it's, they're just starting a profession that's kind of casual and becomes now a lifelong profession. So we have a bridge connecting those people. That's our wow. Mostly Utah presenters. Once you know about it and get in on Jeremy's emails, communications are awesome. Branding is beautiful if you're on that side. But why? you got to get on the inside and be able to be a part of all that. Um, we like the podcast. One thing that I really like is the spirit that's at the conference. We talk about unique value. That's one of the unique things about this. You go to other conferences that are for your art and it's it's focused on the art and here you're able to feel the spirit and we're talking about how maybe wanted to pre-record some of the things so we'll make sure there's a recording of it sometimes the spirits it's hard to have the spirit come through in a pre-recorded thing so um we're sorry we don't include volunteers in a lot of things and get the recognition that they deserve for all the things that they do and for those that aren't in Utah that have a hard time maybe not even making it to the conference. Um, we're proud of the improvements in the social media posts. We're proud that more sponsors and vendors have been brought on to help pay for some things. Um, we're sorry there's not a paid staff that maybe could do some things. There's not more um, avenues of streams to help us be able to do more. Um, we were thinking maybe we could connect the podcast with marketing a little bit better. A general lack of awareness of what we are and what we do. Uh, we need to figure out the relationship we have with the church and what it is. Um, there's a, you know, how much effort and emphasis do we put on emerging creators versus established creators. And then there's not enough Steves. Obviously, if everybody did as much Steve did, who brought everybody into this room, we have more people, right? So we need more Steves. Let's clap. quite yet.
so I'm going to um, slip into the instructions for the next activity, uh, which will actually get us back on time on the agenda. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is called uh, Picture uh, Our Vision, or Picture Your Vision. Let me explain that uh, in a little bit of detail, and then we're going to break. Uh, go ahead and go to the restrooms, check your, your uh, uh, communications with your people back home, uh, start eating. We'll give you kind of 15 minutes away from the table. Then when you come back to the table, you're going to start this exercise and, and do it as you eat. Um, here's what we're trying to do. We want every table to draw a picture. Now this next instruction is going to blow your mind. Really. It's very important that as you're drawing a picture from your table that you do not have one of the artists at your table draw the picture. We're going we're gonna to focus on the thoughts, not the quality of the artwork uh, in this particular exercise. So uh, you will be coming up as a table with a drawing of your group's vision for the future of LDS PMA. What will that look like? You have to decide. Draw a picture of the vision. What would be the ideal, consider the prouds and sorries that you just heard. Uh, consider the eight questions uh, that you were sent um, in your preparations. Does everybody remember that? I just wrote up a little bit about them. But the eight questions were, who are our primary, secondary, and tertiary audiences? What are the unfilled needs? What are the offerings that provide unique value that are not offered other places? Um, improvements in mission statement, membership parameters, objectives. I think at each table you have a copy of those, don't you? As reference. We'll, we'll try to get it to you somehow. We'll try to write it up on foot charts or something so you can refer to those if you need to. Uh, include things that the people at the table find personally valuable. You know, what is it that you want to take? What's the treasure? This is the treasure hunt. You know, what do you want to take from what already exists forward that you make sure that we don't lose? Uh, how can you increase revenue? How can you increase volunteers? How can you increase partnerships and relationships that are important? What are the priorities? No organization on the planet can do everything they want to do. Zero. I've, I've worked with 20% of the most successful corporations on the planet. People who have almost infinite money and they cannot do everything that they want to do. You can't either. So what are your top priorities? What are the things that are most important? And then decision-making processes. Uh, particularly in the question I think it asked about maybe some inclusive ways to do that. Uh, but what should the decision-making processes be? You'll talk about all of this. You'll talk about it deeply. You'll feel deeply. You'll argue with each other. And then you will draw a picture of your conclusion. Do you understand the assignment? Mm -hmm. Okay. How can uh, you draw a picture of all that? <laughs> well, we wouldn't have invited the brightest people on the planet to be here today if they couldn't figure that out. That's what you got to do. That's the task. Picture of all that. And, and I didn't mention it yet. I will emphasize it here. Um, no words. No words. I, I can explain the science of this to those of you who are interested um, outside of the, the room. But we are doing a creative experience here. We are not uh, writing a manual. Um, so force yourself. You'll want to write words. You'll, you'll want to say, our primary audience is, but you're not going to do that. Instead, you're going to like draw an Olympic stand that has three things, and you're going to, at the place of the gold Olympic uh, winner, you're going to draw something that represents the, the primary audience. 
lamps and then at the silver you're gonna now no one can do that now because I just said that, right? You have to come up with your own all right, you first before you Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, you can do symbols are okay. If if you have some symbols that become significant to your group that some somehow capture an idea that is very powerful to your group, you can do a symbol. Uh, but no no words. Are there any questions? Jeremy has one. Yes, Jeremy. Do you want us to take all the prouds and sorries and put them on these boards? I do. So before we uh, break for lunch, please make sure that your prouds and sorries are posted. In fact, let's post. We're going to put the pictures back there. Let's post all the prouds and sorries somehow on this wall, if you can, to see if they'll stick. That's the problem we have sometimes with concrete. I have duct tape. Yes. Oh, well, let's not do duct tape. I, when I served in the state presidency, one of my assignments was to watch the, the uh, meeting houses. And getting the duct tape off of the walls is really, really hard. <laughs> so let's not do that. Steve. Um, how are we doing on the food? Is the food here yet? It's ready? Okay. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to break for 15 minutes to give you a biology uh, and communication opportunity. Uh, come back in 15 minutes, grab the food, uh, get to your table, and start the discussion. Uh, I'm going to come around and see, assume that you have 45 minutes to, to do the picture. So you'll need to start with your discussion. Uh, assume 45 minutes, but I'm going to come around. I kind of think 45 is not going to be enough, especially since we're working through lunch. I'm going to come around and assess your progress uh, individually and then let, let you know exactly how long you'll have to finish. Uh, but we do want to get the pictures started during lunch. So 50 minutes to break, come back, get your food, uh, get your flip chart to your table, uh, make sure that your prouds and sorries are posted over there, uh, and uh, then start the exercise. But it's a choose your own mental box. Um, one of the things people, you know, everyone's creative, so the light bulbs represent that, but the larger light bulb represent the light of Christ. That everyone comes with but also that real feel over there. That's who the first of our audience is, temple for terms of the church, the world. A lot of people come to get direction, and they leave maybe in a different direction sometimes, so we have assignment sign of directions. A big thing is opening doors. Sometimes we'll open apartment for a door. Some people come to speak, some people gain a voice, but we also have one big point that came out was, our people come to the SPM to, to listen. And to hear so there's a mirror. Wagon wheel with spokes helping people connect. That's a big piece. Sometimes it's you learn how to make money in your craft. So we got dollar signs. A weird looking brain for learning. And then a bridge. What comes up a lot of times is for some people it's a bridge in from this to casual hobby or an interest into a profession. Or it's they're just starting a profession that's kind of casual and becomes now a lifelong profession. So we have a bridge connecting those people. That's our wow. This idea is we, we got a little ahead of ourselves. We started the picture before we went back, but it worked out perfectly. We answered the first question about who is our audience. And there's the primary and secondary picture. Our primary audience are the trees, and these trees are publishers. Okay? The trees, obviously, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? They attract the fruit or the, or the whatever it is. So the fruit are, are all the artists out there. Whether you're a writer or an artist, or you're a videographer, or you're a poet, or whatever it is. So each of these this represents film, music, books, uh, audio, video, media, and there's a paintbrush there. So the publishers, we come, the publishers come, we attract all of you artists. As you can see, what's below the surface here is our tertiary audience. And those are the people we're calling our stakeholders. They're below the surface because you don't see people to see them. These are the people that are 
that our, our resources, our funders, our parents, everybody else out there that are investors in the artists. So the sun up here represents the light of Christ because it gives an opportunity for everybody to thrive and everybody to grow. And our mission is to interconnect all of these. We want to interconnect the publishers with the artists and the new investors. We feel strongly that an unfulfilled need that this group has is resources, particularly monetary resources. So we did argue over the word, is it investors, is it resources, and we landed on stakeholders because that tertiary audience is everybody who cares about what we do. And then we spent some time talking about how we would adjust or what we think should change in the mission statement. And as we read it in here on page 41, it's our mission is to empower Latter-day Saint creators and publishers, and we added, and stakeholders, by connecting them at the intersection of faith, creativity, and professional skill. So the mission statement is great, we just feel like we're missing that audience, audience that is going to help keep us alive and give us the opportunity to thrive and grow. Now when you're talking about stakeholders providing primarily financial resources, are you talking about providing those resources to LDSP May or to the publishers and creators or both? Both. I mean that tertiary audience is everybody who's interested in an artist or a publisher or in our association. Because all three grow this association. And the way to expand the audience like, the way to help artists be more successful is to have more people who want to buy uh, wholesome books right. and art. And as you can see, it's all interconnected below the surface. It's like a redwood tree, a forest of redwood trees. Those roots connect and hold each other up and help each other thrive. A redwood tree standing alone can be toppled by the wind. When it's part of its uh, ecosystem, it will help each other to thrive and to grow and to stay alive. Uh -huh. Can you give some specific examples of the shareholders? Like, yeah, um, I'm going to turn to my group. We had some great ideas over here. See, you want to shift? I one specific I would give you would be to say it's, it's like any parent who has a child, maybe who is an artist, and they want to invest and they want to invest in our association because they want to give that child more opportunity. Steve had some good ideas along the lines about um, there are organizations out there that can provide grants. We should be much better at grant writing and finding ways to bring more money in. Um, yeah, people, for individuals providing donations, uh, organizations providing contributions, uh, 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 people um, doing uh, sponsorships, uh, um, all different kinds of sponsorships. Uh, Scholarships we talked about. Uh, supporting the, 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 the community, but also supporting uh, individual artists, individual uh, writers, and so on. You know, the huge example of this um, it, it is um, 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 uh, Sanderson going out and getting what, $52 million or something to support his publishing, and, and LDSP May is stretching along on a budget of about $80,000, $90,000 a year. And Brian Sanderson manages to get and so there's money out there. We, we don't have a clue how to actually get it. Why don't we do what Angel Studio does? Why don't we do more crowdsourcing? We should be doing that. I mean, we have hugely talented people here. We should be doing a lot more of that kind of thing. We have a question. Another stakeholder, uh, a great stakeholder example would be uh, BYU College of Humanities and the Arts. They're a stakeholder. Uh, they, their interest is, is not a, a writer or a publisher or uh, any of that, it's the students that are coming out to become all those things. So they're, they're a stakeholder as well. And, and, and symbolically, if you look at it, the trees are kind of the wisdom that those that have been in the industry for a while and the fruit, you know, are our upcoming students, our upcoming artists. And that's how we're bringing them together, how we're nourishing the next generation. And then eventually that fruit, Falls, become seeds, and they grow and they bring on the next generation. So that's the symbolism of what we have done here. Yeah. Another, way of, another way of saying this is that we have a, a focus on uh, what are the interests of individual artists, individual writers, individual uh, book authors, individual filmmakers, and so on. We haven't really developed devoted hardly any attention to what are the interests of potential sources of uh, resources, of funding, 
what do they want that might lead them to get behind it? There's some other organizations that have done a far better job of figuring out what would <coughs> these individuals and organizations have a lot of money, a lot of resources. They have goals. They, they have places they want to, to use that money for, and we haven't we haven't even tried to figure yeah. out how yeah. we can interconnect them in ways that, that, that help them do what they're trying to do. We haven't tapped into this, and that's why it's a resource below the surface, because we're not seeing that yet. It's got to be there for us to grow, but we don't see that yet. So deep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have a deep group. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Let's fly. serving them or are they only serving 
some of maybe our stakeholders or some tertiary relationships that we may have. Are we serving our people? So it may change some of our focus when we really look at who is our primary audience. And the primary audience is really the ones who are funding us. They're the ones who support our conference financially. That's where we get the majority of our money, although we would love to look at other relationships as far as helping to support this process, even financially. And the result, this just shows the result is that everyone in this community is able to complete the mission that they're meant to complete on earth, to put out the products or the message or, or have the connection that they're meant to have so that they can put out in the world what they need to do. And as Corinne and I discussed, you know, being really totally different levels in our career and experience in our association with Latter-day Saints, uh, publishing media and the yeah, arts, sorry, is that there's really a relationship between these two groups that it's not just that these people are serving our, the secondary is serving our primary, but that really also our primary is serving our secondary by providing opportunities for them to give back, by giving them energy, by giving them validation. And there's a lot that we each give each other. And that's what these little orange lines are. Learning the, the craft 
having those people that um, can teach us and then us being able to teach other people. And having continued ideas, not just like one creative idea and then, you know, we're going to go off. We want to have continued creativity and continued ideas. And this is our marketing and getting our message out there to all of the people. Um, having those marketing skills, having those experts that can help teach us about the marketing, and learning how to appropriately use technology to further our message. This is our business. It's a high rise, which none of us have quite made it. We decided, but we couldn't figure out anything else to show. We need to have those business skills. Um, is this is supposed to be yoga. <laughs> we need those wise mentors. And then as we go through this, we become mentors for other people because we're always helping each other um, move up this, this ladder. Um, and the having a, the worldwide view, being able to touch people, going out and touching other cultures and other people and spreading this message around the world and making sure that we actually have a product. So this is our musical note, a book, a film reel, because we want to help people get to the point we want them to have success, whatever that success means for them. And for some of them, that success is just moving closer to the light. That success can be making sure that they can make enough money, they can live, that they have this product that they're helping to lift up other people. So this was kind of our vision of how we can... Um, and one other thing that I didn't share before, but I've been thinking about over there, this circle that encompasses what we're doing, um, in the new, the new things that they're having teachers learn, the new outline, um, they say that the one thing you've got to have in your discussion is the principle. Because the principle is the basket that holds all the mess of the discussion inside of it. And I think that's what our mission statement needs to be, is the principle of what we're about and how we accomplish this, so that no matter what happens in the conference and with all the mentoring things that we're doing and the ways we're trying to help each other, that we have that basket to keep it contained as to who we are as Elias Pume. Nice. So we started out with Utah, the country, and the world because that's what we want to expand to. Right now it's kind of focused in Utah. That's where the core is. So now we are thinking, how do we go from there to our nation, and then how do we go to the world? And uh, Cynthia, you talk about these cute little people. One of the first things after we looked at the world was what's the objective? And everything we should do should follow the teachings of our prophet, which is to help gather Israel to the Savior. And um, if we have that in mind, then wherever we are, whether we're in our homes or whether we're from the world representing the diversity and experience of the world, we're still moving towards that goal. One of the things that we talked about was marketing. And in that marketing, it should be built on a foundation of faith. And then it's principle-based so that we learn each step in the marketing plan. Um, an airplane and, of course, a bus. We all need to be able to, to gather, but we're all gathering in different ways. And some of us are going to be able to easily have that plane ride. Some of us are going to have to work a little bit to get here. And we may have to compromise on the cushiness of that journey. But if we have a purpose, then it doesn't matter how diverse we are. We know why we're coming. There's another thing that this here symbolizes really well, and I think that's the different parts of our um, primary audiences. Um, in marketing speak, you need to be really specific about who you're actually trying to reach. Uh, and that doesn't mean that other people don't get to come. It means that when you speak to the right people, they bring the other people as well. And so we mentioned um, a few different groups um, split into age groups. And, and the first group is uh, mothers whose children have gone off to school. So 
40 somethings, 50 somethings. That's one segment where they actually have a little bit of time and a little bit of money to do something to develop their own version of what does it mean to have a personal ministry? Of how, how am I uniquely going to be a disciple of Christ and what am I going to spend my time doing? And if that's a creative endeavor, then they're a great fit for us, right? Um, another group is the empty nesters. Um, that's the first group, but exploded in terms of free time and resources. They have faith, they have experiences, they have resources to go do something great with the remainder of their service. And, uh, and we want to help them, we want to serve them. Then there's another group, and that's the, the high school and college students, the up and coming, that might not necessarily be able to go out and, and do a ton right now because they're still on the learning journey. But if we teach them properly, then we can give them a foundation to then go out and, and serve others. And then there's also a group of those scared fathers. I was in this group. The, the guys that have a family to feed and a creative skill and talent and know that God has a plan for them. They have no idea what steps they need to take to make it there. That might be a small group, but we're here. So first, basic statement, we're going to talk about our audience. And sorry to tell you guys, Demographics are not always the best way to go with your audience. <laughs> because you talk about the empty nesters, you talk about the moms, kids at school. What about the women who can't have kids? They get left out. What about the singles? So, demographics are not always the way to go. But we do know some things about our audience. They are people of faith, they have a desire to create. They have something to contribute, and they have something that they need. So here's our audience, and here's LDSPMA. LDSPMA, represented by the vending machine, this is the place where our audience would come and, hey, I've got this to contribute, I need something. Oh, wow, I didn't know that we had film producers here. So I'll contribute my thing and connect with the film producer. We also, you'll notice, have some empty, empty spaces on there because we do not yet have everything. Which is where when that one person comes along with that new, different, unique thing to contribute. We've got people like Steve and people like so many others here. Hey, we've got a spot where you can write. And it is really a contribute what you have, get what you need, and learn what you need in place. And that's basically our concept. Very nice.